I'm going to be preaching a message today. Um, you don't hear too many people talk about this today, but we're going to be talking about another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and we're going to start with verses 1 through 6, and then we're going to jump down to 12 through 15. Paul writes here, he says, Would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear... Pay attention. Listen to this closely. Lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if he receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, ye might bear, well bear with him, for I suppose I was not at wit behind the very chiefest apostles. But though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. And then let's go down to verses 12 through 15. It says, But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. For such are false apostles deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Another gospel, another Jesus, another spirit. I think that uh, when I've, I've preached this message a few different times over the years and I have thought about this passage of Scripture over and over again, what Paul must have been going through, the burden that was on his heart as he began to preach the gospel of Christ in regions that had never even heard about Jesus. They did not know the saving grace of God and met, in fact many of these people that Paul went and ministered to had not even heard anything about the Lord. They were barbarians. They were they were heathens. They were pagans. They they worshipped the trees. They worshipped the the animals. They worshipped the stars and all of these things. They never heard about Jesus. So when Paul begins to preach the gospel to them in the power of God. These people began to receive the message of the gospel, but then Satan, through his subtlety, comes behind Paul with false apostles. He begins to put in their path men and women that would preach what sounds like the truth. It looks like the truth, but in reality, it's a counterfeit. How many of you ever seen a counterfeit $100 bill or $10 bill or $20 bill? How many of you ever seen it? When you first looked at it, did it look like the real thing? But as you began to look at it a little bit more, you realize there's something just not right about this. There's just something about it that don't feel right. Alright. I remember years ago when I was talking to some uh, tellers at the bank and I asked them, I said, you know, you've got thousands of dollars that come into the bank every single day. Mm -hmm. How is it that you're able to automatically pick up on that counterfeit mm -hmm. so quickly? And this is the response one of the, tellers, one of the tellers told me. She said, when you felt the real thing so many times, you can always tell when that counterfeit comes out. All right, all right. You see, we've got to make sure that we hear the genuine gospel and we study the genuine gospel out of this book right here so when the counterfeit comes, we'll know the difference. Mm -hmm. Amen. But we're not going to know the difference between what's real and what's false unless we get in this book right here. This book will help us realize and uh, determine what's real and what's false. All right. All right. Everybody that comes to you talking about 
Jesus. Let's start with that one, another yes. Jesus. And talking about the Jesus of that Bible right there. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people today talking about Jesus, amen? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that's talking about how wonderful He is, and He is. Yes. If you get to know the real Jesus, He is wonderful, yes. you understand? Yes. But the real Jesus is going to separate you from the world. The real Jesus is going to put something in your heart that's going to make you different. Yes. The real Jesus is going to make you a changed person. Yes. You're not going to walk out the same way you came in when you get the real Jesus inside of you, amen? amen. He's going to change your life. Yes, He will. Counterfeit Jesus is all over the place. The cults are knocking on your doors and they're talking about Jesus. Yes, sir. They're talking about Jesus on this side of town and that side of town. Right. But honey, if they don't line up with this book right here and they don't tell you that Jesus of the Bible is a counterfeit and you can go ahead and mark it down and not accept it. Mm -hmm. Another Jesus. Romans chapter 16 says this. Paul was talking to the Romans about Jesus. And here's what he said in chapter 16. Bear with me for a minute. Let me get over there. It's important that we know the difference. He says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and defenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the sinner. See, I can get up here all day long and tell you Jesus is one of many ways to get dead. But I'd be lying to you. Because Jesus is not one of many ways to get to heaven. Jesus is the only way to get to heaven. All right. Buddha ain't going to get you there. Mm -hmm. Muhammad ain't going to get you there. Yeah. Right. Amen. Joseph Smith ain't going to get you there. Yeah. Right. Charles Tass Russell ain't going to get you there. Yeah. Mormons ain't going to get you there. Yeah. Catholic Church ain't going to get you there. Mm -hmm. Jesus is going to get you there. Amen. Yeah. If you surrender to Him, He'll get you there. Yeah. Barry ain't going to get you yeah. there. Yeah. But Jesus is going to get you there. That's right. Yeah. Yes, He is. You see how subtle it is? Mm -hmm. We, we want to say, Jesus plus this over here. Mm -hmm. Jesus plus come and join my church. Yeah. Jesus plus come over here and get baptized. Mm -hmm. Jesus plus, why don't you go over here and speak in tongues? Jesus plus this. Jesus plus that. No, no Jesus is everything. Yeah. That's all you need. Mm -hmm. The simplicity that's in Christ. You see what I'm saying? Jesus plus nothing. How about that? He's the only way. Did He not say, I am the way, and the truth, and the life? Yeah. I am the resurrection. I am the light of the world. He didn't say, I am a light of the world. He didn't say, I'm one of many ways to get to God. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. All right? Jesus Christ is the way. Mm -hmm. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that's the Jesus of the Bible. Amen. Now, if somebody comes along and tells you something contrary to that, they're lying to you. There ain't no other way to do it. That's being polite. They're lying to you. And you know what the Bible says about all liars? They'll have their part in the lake of fire. They better repent. Because if I sat here and told you today, sister, if you just shake my hand, shake the preacher's hand, be good on Sunday. Be good. Do good to your neighbor. Do all these wonderful things. You're going to go to heaven. I'd be lying to her. That's right. That's right. I'd be telling her a lie. Yes. But if I come to her and say, Sister, I'm a poor, wretched sinner. I'm in need of the Savior. There's only one way to get to heaven. It's through Jesus Christ and His shed blood. And trusting in that blood. And trusting in the blood atonement. That's what gets you to heaven. Yeah, I'm telling her the truth. Mm -hmm. Don't care how good you are. Don't care how bad you are. Jesus will save the goodest and the worst. He'll save the worst and the goodest. He'll put them all on one playing field. Because when we stand before God, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be on one playing field. And it's a great white throne judgment and we're going to have to give an account for what we did with Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. One gospel. Yes. Colossians chapter 2 says this. He said, To come to you with fair speeches. How I many of you have ever heard these slick preachers coming up and telling y'all these lies? They're lying to you. 
They're lying to you when they tell you you've got, you, you'll, you'll be alright as long as you join my church. As long as you pay your tithes. As long as you do this. As long as you do that. Plus, plus, plus. Works, works, works. Alright. At the end of the day, their righteousness is as filthy rags. The Bible says our righteousness are as filthy rags. Amen? Yes. We can't live good enough to get to heaven. You understand that? We can't be good enough to get there. We need a Savior. Amen. We need the Savior, Jesus Christ. He's the one that's going to get us there. Yes, he is. Colossians chapter 2 says this. In verses 6 through 15, it says this. It says, And as you therefore have received Jesus Christ the Lord, so walk in Him. You're going to be changed when you get in this. Amen. You're going to change when you get in this now. Amen. When I was in the Marine Corps, when I stepped off that bus and I got off there at Paris Island, I promise you, I was, I was a changed man. Amen. Right, when I got off that bus and put my foot on those little footprints out there, I realized something's different about this place. Amen. And it made me think different. It made me talk different. It made me walk different. Yeah. It made me go different. Yeah. It made me not do the same things I did when I walked off that bus. And honey, when I graduated across that parade day, I knew something was different about me. All right. People knew that I was different too because they could see a change in my life. Mm -hmm. When I came home from Paris Island, they knew I was different. Mm -hmm. Honey, when you get out in the altar and you ask Jesus to come into your life and save your soul, right. you will be different. Okay. People will know the difference in you. They will know you're a different man and a different All right. woman. All right. Yes. A double dose will do you. Yes. If they don't know you're different, get back down there and get it until you get it right. Yes. Because Jesus will change your life. All right. Paul was a changed man. When he was going to the road to Damascus, he was going on his way to kill some Christians. Amen. He thought he was doing God a service. He wanted to wipe them out. Amen. But I'm telling you what, when that light shined down from heaven and God asked him, he said, why are you persecuting me, Paul? He said, who are you, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus, who you persecuting me. Right. Right. And he went up there to Ananias. He was a changed man. Yeah. He didn't want to destroy the church anymore. He was becoming the church. All right. He was going from town to town, establishing churches everywhere he went, telling them the gospel. He went all the way to Nero. Yes. I'll go to Nero and tell him about Jesus. I don't care who he is. He needs to know Jesus too. He needs to be saved also. Amen. Praise God. He was not ashamed. Now he says over here in Colossians chapter 2, he says, Rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding therewith with thanksgiving. Now watch. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit through the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. For in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily and ye are complete in Him which is the head of all principality and power. Paul says when you receive Christ you let Him live through you and understand this. Jesus all the fullness of the Godhead dwells in Him bodily. If they come and they don't preach that to you, then they're false gospel. Because Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16 Greatest the mystery of godliness. God must manifest in the flesh. Amen? And Jesus Christ is the one we worship. We don't worship statues. We don't worship men. If you do, you need to get it right. Because Jesus is the one that we worship. Jesus is the one we serve. And the way we find out how to worship Him and serve Him is in this book right here. If you don't read your Bible, you're going to be deceived when the enemy comes towards you and preaches a gospel that you don't recognize. Why we, don't, why we fall so many times to a false gospel when they come knocking on our door? All right. Amen. I'm a, I'm a uh, Jehovah's Witness, and I'm here to tell you about Kingdom Hall. Yeah. I want you to give me your Bible and let me give you mine. And let me get you in this watchtower over here. And you read it, and you'll be just fine. Mm -hmm. All right. First thing they do is take your King James Bible, boy, mm -hmm. and give you one of theirs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see how tricky the enemy is? Yeah. 
Because he don't want you to read that book right there. Because mm -hmm. he knows that book right there changes you. He knows that book right there is a flashlight. Yeah. It'll flash right down in there and it'll discern between truth and error. Oh. It'll let you know whether he's telling you the right way or the wrong way. Yeah. Well, that's right. why the enemy wants to take this book away from you. Yeah. And give you a counterfeit. Yes, yes. A counterfeit book. Yeah. A counterfeit gospel. Yeah. And then they're going to tell you that Jesus is some kind of exalted angel. Yeah. Then they're going to tell you that Jesus is not to be worshipped. Yeah. Then they're going to tell you Jesus is just like all the other men. He was a good man. He was a good prophet. But that's all he was. No, no, no. Jesus is God Almighty in the flesh. Yeah. Jesus is the one we worship. Yeah. There is no beginning and ending with Him. He is the beginning. All he right. is the end. All right. He is the Alpha. Yeah. He is the Omega. If they don't preach that, they're telling you a lie. Amen. 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 It says they preach another spirit. Oh, that's a good one. And look, the enemy don't change what he tells you. He may change his tactics, mm -hmm. but he's giving you the same lie he gave them in the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. He gets you away from God's word. He gets you away from God's truth and gives you a lie to replace it. But that lie is going to sound like the truth. Amen. Counterfeit. Counterfeit. Let's go over here real quick. First John chapter 4. If I'm going a little too fast, you have to give these after the uh, meeting. It says here in verses 1 through 3, it says, Beloved, believe not every spirit. Let me read that again. Believe not every spirit. 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. But try the spirits. How do we try the spirits? Anybody know how we try the spirits? Take a while to guess how we try the spirits. That book right there. I don't care who they are. I don't care what they claim to be. I don't care if they're apostle, prophet, uh, pope. It don't matter what they are. What kind of title do they want to put on their name? If their doctrine don't line up with God's Word, it's false. Right. That's how much I believe that book. Amen. That book right there is my final authority. Amen. And it needs to be yours too. If we come and we tell you something that don't line up with this right here, go ahead and write it off. Amen. She's Amen. telling you a lie. She's telling you a lie. Amen. Why? Why? Because God gave us a standard. Amen. And this is what we're going to be judged by on the great white throne judgment day. Amen. The judgment seat of yeah. Christ. God's going to say, I gave you this book. Now, what did you do with it? Did you take that book and read it? Did you take that book and compare what people were saying against that book? Did you realize that that book is what's going to judge you on the final day? God's Word is awesome. Amen. God's Word is powerful. Amen. And it's that Word, Amen. the Bible says, that will cut asunder the body, soul, and spirit. Yes. It's the truth. Praise God. It says, Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are God, because many, everybody say many. Many. He didn't say some. Mm -hmm. He said many, many false prophets have gone out into the world. Mm -hmm. Many are coming at you designed to destroy your soul. It's true. Amen. Many are trying to reach out and Amen. deceive you uh -huh. and send you to hell. All right. Amen. They don't have your best interest in mind. Amen. The Bible says with fair speeches they come to you right. trying to deceive you right. trying to bring you down to hell. Amen. I'm telling you, you've got something that will help you Amen. to stand up and put a standard against them so they cannot deceive you in God's word. You can hold this book up against them and say, Sir, man, you're wrong. This Bible right here says you're wrong. Mm -hmm. Amen. I go by this book. Amen. They call me a man of the book. Why do you think they call me that? Because this book is what I go by. Yeah. This book is what's going to judge me. And this book is what I judge other people by. All right. What did you say? Show me Bible verse. Amen. Well, blah, 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 blah. Amen. They can't do it. You know why they can't do it? Because the truth's not in them. Amen. When you start, what did Jesus do when Satan came to him? He said, it is written. When the enemy came to him and tried to get him to bow down and worship him, 
And when the enemy tried to get Jesus to compromise his ministry and compromise his mission, Jesus said, get thee hence, Satan. It is written. Amen. It is written. Amen. It is written. Amen. It is written. Amen. And that's what we've got to learn to do when they come to us. It is written. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is written. I love God's Word. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, Hereby I know you the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Amen. 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 you got to acknowledge that He first came and died for our sins. Amen. That's the first step. Amen. If they deny the blood atonement, if they deny that Jesus died for our sins, Amen. as the blood atonement for our sins, Amen. Beware of them. Amen. He says that every spirit that confesses this is of God. But every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist. Amen. Where have you heard that it should come? And even now already it is in the world. Ye are of God little children and have overcome them. How have you overcome them? Amen. The Bible says you've overcome them by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. The word of the testimony is this book. Amen. We've got two things, two weapons at our disposal. Amen. The Word of God Amen. and our testimony that we've been washed in the blood. Amen. See, the enemy cannot cross that bloodline. He cannot go against the blood of Jesus. Did you know that? He can come against you, sister. He can put all things on you and try to destroy you and your flesh. But when it comes to your soul, he cannot get down in that soul and save your soul. Because you can't cross that 